Imagine standing on a lifeless, dusty plane, 384, 400 kilometers from Earth. Above you, the sky is pitch black. There's no sound, no wind, no air, just silence. But below your feet, below the surface of this ancient gray world lies a secret that might reshape our future. Not long ago, China quietly launched a mission to the moon's far side, a place no human had ever explored in person and few had ever considered to be more than a cratered desert. What they found is now challenging everything we thought we knew, not just about the moon, but about Earth, our solar system, and maybe even the future of civilization. This isn't just a science mission. It's a geopolitical statement, a technological triumph, and a foreshadowing of a new kind of space race, one where the moon is the starting line, not the finish. The moon might feel like old news. We've seen humans walk on it. We've watched it rise and fall in the sky every night. But its scientific potential is far from exhausted. For decades, the moon was a kind of celestial time capsule preserving clues to the early solar system. Unlike Earth, which has undergone erosion, tectonic activity, and atmospheric reshaping the moon, has remained mostly unchanged. NASA's those Apollo missions brought back 382 kilograms of lunar material. Those samples taught us much, but they also had a huge blind spot. They were all from the near side. The far side, which always faces away from Earth due to tidal locking, remained unexplored. That's where China comes in. Since 2003, China's space agency, CNSA, has been rapidly developing. The Chang'e Lunar Program, named after the Chinese moon goddess, has achieved milestone after milestone. Chang'e 4 in particular changed the game. It was the first spacecraft in history to successfully land on the moon's far side. With robotic rovers like U-22, China began exploring regions no nation had ever touched. But why focus on the moon's far side? For one, it provides a pristine scientific environment shielded from Earth's radio interference. For another, it is largely untouched, offering geological samples potentially billions of years old. And of course, there's also the future lunar bases, resource mining, and the potential military advantages of off-world operations. The Chang'e 4 mission, accompanied by U-22, landed in the Von Kerman crater within the moon's South Pole 8 can basin, one of the oldest and largest impact craters in the solar system. This crater may have been caused by a colossal asteroid that punched deep into the moon's crust, exposing material from the mantle, the layer beneath the surface crust. U22's spectrometer readings hinted at olivine and low calcium pyroxene materials associated with mantle rock. This was groundbreaking. Until now, no mission had ever definitively confirmed access to lunar mantle material. What this tells us is that the moon may not be as geologically dead as previously thought. One of the most puzzling things China's missions revealed is the dramatic difference between the moon's near side and far side. The near side has large, dark basalt plains known as Maria, formed by ancient volcanic activity. The far side brighter, more cratered and geologically distinct. The prevailing theory is that Earth's gravitational and thermal influence caused the near side to retain heat longer, allowing for volcanic activity while the far side cooled faster. But findings from Chang'e 6 tell a more complicated story. Samples from the far side contain surprisingly young volcanic rocks, suggesting that lava may have flowed far more recently than scientists thought. That contradicts many long-standing theories about how the moon cooled and aged. Perhaps the most exciting discovery, a new mineral change site, why? Invisible to the naked eye, this tiny crystal holds helium-3, a rare isotope virtually absent on Earth but abundant on the moon. Why is that important? Because helium-3 could one day be the key to clean efficient nuclear fusion energy. 
It doesn't produce radioactive waste and it's stable, but Earth's magnetic field prevents helium-3 from reaching our surface. The moon, however, has no such shield. Chang D5 and 6 both return samples rich in helium-3 bearing minerals. While commercial fusion reactors are still under development, these findings could position China as a future energy superpower, especially if extraction becomes viable. Another shocking discovery came when Chinese scientists detected water not just ice hidden in dark craters, but actual water molecules embedded in minerals on sunlit surfaces. This changes everything. Until recently, it was assumed water could only survive in permanently shadowed regions. Water is essential for long-term human habitation, not just for drinking, but also for splitting into hydrogen and oxygen rocket fuel. If water is widely distributed, lunar bases become exponentially more feasible. Meet Dr. Li Wei, one of the lead scientists on the Chang'e program. Born in a small village in Sichuan, he grew up watching grainy footage of the Apollo missions. I always believed we could go further, he said in a recent interview. His team worked for years in near total secrecy to develop the payloads that now sit on the moon's far side. Or consider the story of Lu Feng, an engineer who personally helped design the sample return capsule. When Chang A5 successfully landed, she cried on national television. This isn't just about rock, she said. It's about showing the world what we're capable of. China is already outlining plans for a permanent lunar research station by the 2030s. Working with Russia and potentially other nations, they envision a base at the moon's South Pole. Such a base could serve as a launch point for Mars missions, a site for deep space telescopes, or even a helium-3 mining colony. NASA is also planning its Artemis missions, and private companies like SpaceX are in the mix. But China is currently the only nation actively returning samples from the moon. Their focus on infrastructure rovers, relay satellites, landers, sample collectors, signals a long-term plan. What happens on the moon won't stay on the moon. Whether it's understanding Earth's geological past, developing clean energy, or preparing for life beyond our planet, China's lunar discoveries are reshaping what's possible. The next great frontier is no longer just about getting to space. It's about staying there, learning, building, and thriving. And as we look to the moon with new eyes, we might also be looking at the future of Earth itself.